After the skate camp was over, we started coming back, and I had to get back home. We had been gone all summer, and then I kind of was moving in another direction in my life. And from that time, he went down to San Diego and started living there at the A Street house, and he just kind of went off, and I was excited. And after that summer, uh, he just never even went back home. I mean, to this yeah. day, he just never went back home. Sometimes he'd get stranded at the A Street house, and so he would call me, be like, oh, you know, what are you doing? You know, come pick me up, let's go skate, let's go skate, whatever. And so, we, you know, we started kind of hanging out. I'd come out, you know, and pick him up and, you know, show him all the local spots around and stuff. I skated with him a lot, just those H Street days, and we were filming a lot together. I was just living at the H Street house at that point, and I was 16, probably still. Coincidentally, here's, here's something that some people that might not know about me and Eric, but coincidentally, we were born in the same hospital in Bangkok, Thailand. My mom's Thai and Eric's mom's Thai. You know, I was talking to my mom and she said, yeah, I mean, at, at the time, that was the only hospital in Bangkok. So it was kind of interesting to find that out, you know, years after. Yeah, I mean, we hung out, you know, every day. We're close buds, you know what I mean? It was like, he was like, that was my dude, you know what I mean? We hung out every day and we just did a lot of things together and stuff and so we kept each other motivated and keep this thing moving. I actually got sponsored for skating vert. I mean not that I labeled myself a vert skater but all in all we see we've always skated everything you know whatever was available to us. I mean back in the days it was kind of like that you know what I mean it wasn't like you're a vert skater or a street skater or whatever for the most part everyone skated everything. No I think skating with him just helped me get better on tranny. When I grew up, in that time, you skated everything anyways. You know, you still didn't have to sort of define yourself as like a street or a vert dude. I just wanted to be good at everything. I mean, vert was one of the toughest things, though, to, for me, for sure, but I wanted to be good on everything. You know, the thing that I'd noticed about Kostin growing up, he's just, uh, um, he's just one of those dudes that's kind of good at whatever he does. The kids these days would be amazed at how sick Kostin is on vert. He's got more recognition for his street skating, but all in all, I mean, he can, he can really skate anything. I bet you'd be able to even skate mega ramp if you wanted to. Anything I'd ever seen him try to do, he's good at, naturally. But it was almost depressing. Like, you know, I'd be trying a trick or whatever, and he'd come up just goofing around. He'd just come through and just do it to manual or out of a manual or something, you know what I mean? He's just that good. I knew of Eric. Like, I was a huge Beyond fan. Like, Costin was a god. Costin was my favorite skater as a kid. Number one. His H Street part, I loved his H Street part. I was like, dude, this dude's the best. Was H Street Next the video that you actually like went out and filmed for, your first yeah. time filming a part? Yeah, yeah. I remember going out and filming with Ternaski when he was still at H Street, you know? Then they, he broke out and did Plan B. Like, by then we'd found out Plan B was being formed, all right? It's like, yeah. Eddie told me, he's like, yeah, they're starting a company. Ternowski's leaving. I'm sure, like, Mike Ternowski was really good with picking out dudes that still to this day are in the industry and, like, some of the, some of the best, you know what I mean? And I'm sure Mike Ternowski had his eye on Eric and wanted him on the team. That would have been amazing to see, like, Costin on Plan B. I've never even thought of that, but, like, just when you said that, I'm just like, wow, that would be amazing. James Kelch was like, I'm trying to get on Plan B. That's why I was filming. I was, he wanted me to film him for a response to me video, and he said Plan B was going to be like the, the dudes that are on it, you know, the, the people that everybody knows that are on. And he said like also like Jason Carney, and I think he said Eric Costin. And that's probably the first time that I, it maybe dawned on me that Eric must be really good. I knew Mike wanted to put him on Plan B, and I think he was in the name of the AMs or something like that. But I didn't really know him that well, so I was just like, ah. But do you think that was more because you didn't know him, or more? I, I think it was more just because I just didn't really know him. I just didn't really care, you know what I mean? So I know people have always given me shit, like, oh, you didn't want him on. But I mean, I was just more about, like, I knew Sean, I knew Rick, you know? So it was just like, let's put these people on. And especially at that time, everybody was really young. There was, like, a lot of shit talkers and whatnot. With any person that's really good at what they do, people are going to be intimidated and they're going to fear it a little bit. It was just probably people jealous that he was such a good skater trying to hate on him, you know what I mean? Was there talk of you going to Plan B? Yeah, it's crazy. I was with Eddie and we drove to the contest. Tony Mag wants me to enter the contest. I was like, I don't want to enter the contest. I don't want to be pro. Like, I don't think I'm ready. I'm not ready to be a pro. Like, if I do this, I'm pro, you know? <laughs> That's what it was. It was like contest, you know? Ternaski pulls me aside and goes, hey, man, uh, 
don't enter this contest. I want you to ride for plan B. I want you to be an AM for plan B. There's the pressure that quitting being 16 and like having to turn pro all like in one day. Uh, I'm with Eddie. He wants me to like just, you know, say no and quit on the spot. And, you know, Ternaski is like, you know, Eddie will understand. I was like, dude, I can't do that to Eddie. I, I, I can't, you know, like I can't quit H Street. Like I can't. Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, when you're that good and, you know, everybody's going to come at you. I think what he did was, was great. I think he did it the right way. Eric didn't just, like, bounce at a first opportunity to go with this super team that was being created, you know what I mean? That's cool that Eric had some loyalty at such a young age when a lot of people were bouncing around. After, you know, um, half the crew broke apart and, and, and did uh, Plan B, there was a greater appreciation for the people that remained. For whatever reason, Tony Meg kind of valued me more than Costin in regards to, you know, what he wanted to pay him and stuff. And so I think I might have convinced Meg if we were hoping to be a brand, you know, for any more time, you know, definitely Costin is the main dude. You know, it's getting more money. I remember Alfonso going to Tony, like, Sort of strong army. I'm like, you gotta pay. You gotta pay Eric more. We're gonna like, gonna, we're gonna get an apartment. He was living with his mom, so he kind of strong armed Tony to pay me like 500 bucks a month so I can like cover some rent. <laughs> yeah. So you were pro for H Street. I was pro. Did you had a board on H Street? I had a board, and it was like this horrible like greeting card. It was like an old lady all wrinkled up. It was just a bad illustration. And I was like, oh, this is funny. Like this would be funny graphic, you know, being a kid. Tony, should we make this as a graphic? And that's that's how simple it was back then. <laughs> it didn't come out till I quit. A few of them leaked and kind of out a couple hundred, I guess, you know, they did get to shops. I remember his first board on 8th Street though, at the skate shop I worked at, had the grandma. It wouldn't sell. Because like right when that board came out, he was on 101. Okay. So everyone was like 101. And it sucks to this day because I wish that I would have grabbed that board, not knowing. Years ago, Pat Chinita had come up to me and said, hey man, I, I, got, I got one of your boards. I stole it from Tony. I got your first H Street board. I, I want to give it to you. And Pat Chinita had stolen it, and he wanted to give it to me, and he gave it to me, finally. That's finally got it to me. But it was pretty, yeah, it was sick that he, he thought to, that I would want it, you know? And I, I did. I was like, dude, yeah, totally. It wouldn't even sell, we ended up like giving it away. And this is when no one got a free board. I was like unheard of. I remember my friends from Deluxe would send me board and I'd be like, oh my God, I just got a free board. 